Today on the BRS 160, we might just sterilize this tank. Hi guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the BRS 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160 gallon reef tank. This week we're going to talk UV sterilizers, we'll discuss what they do, what they don't do, setting realistic expectations, how they function, how to size and properly set up a sterilizer, answer some common questions, and show you the installation for the BRS-160. UV sterilizers are probably one of the most hotly debated topics in the hobby, with reefers firmly divided on their position of UV sterilizers effectiveness in closed systems like a reef aquarium. Sterilizers are designed to protect your fish against harmful waterborne pathogens like bacteria, protozoa and viruses. In a closed system like a fish tank, these pathogens can spread quickly and easily wipe out an entire tank population. UV sterilizers can also reduce the spread of waterborne algae and cyanobacteria, which is obviously a desirable effect in a reef tank. So where does all the hotly contested debate come from? I think it's mostly from a complete misunderstanding of the expectations of what a sterilizer is going to achieve in a reef tank. The sterilizer is only designed to reduce the chances of an outbreak, and in the event of an outbreak, slow the progression so you have time to research and treat your fish before they're all affected. The sterilizer is in no way even close to complete protection from an outbreak and of almost no value treating an already existing disease, algae, or cyano outbreak. Once a bacteria, a protozoa, or a virus has settled in the fish, defeated its immune system, or natural resistance, the sterilizer is going to do nothing to protect that fish from the progression of the disease. However, it will help protect the rest of the fish in your tank. Again, in no way can you consider the sterilizer to be an impenetrable solution that completely protects the other fish in the tank, but installed correctly, it's absolutely reducing the population of pathogens in the tank and going to give the rest of the tank's inhabitants natural resistance to this disease a fighting chance, as well as providing you the time to properly treat the tank before the outbreak gets out of hand and you lose the entire tank. I like to think of this as being trapped in a small room with 10 people and one has the flu. If we did nothing, there's a small chance all of our immune systems are strong and healthy enough that none of us would get sick, but it's more likely it would spread and overwhelm our immune systems and most people would end up sick. Anyone who's got sick after being on a plane should understand this concept pretty well. However, if we properly sterilized all the surfaces in this room and the air we're breathing, the chances of the virus spreading absolutely go down. Even more so if we have the time to spot the sick member of the room and remove them before the rest of us show signs of the illness. However, even then we can all still get sick. Removing the sick member and sterilizing the room and air is far from a sure thing. The goal in the reef tank is to not completely eliminate the chances of an outbreak of disease or algae in the aquarium, and certainly not to cure it after it's already happened. The UV sterilizer is simply there to reduce the chances that you ever have to deal with an issue like this, and if you do, give you more time to do something about it. Regardless of the side of the debate you find yourself on, this is a statement that almost everyone can agree with. There's an endless amount of zoos, public aquariums, aquaculture facilities, and marine wholesalers that are in the business of protecting their fish, and they use UV sterilizers precisely for this reason, to protect the fish and keep them healthy. These are industries where losing animals just isn't an option, and survivability equals profitability. The Emperor Aquatics brand of sterilizers in particular is popular in these critical industries, with a pretty long list of respected clients. The one important component you should all get from all this for sure is a UV sterilizer is in no way a requirement for a successful reef tank. It's really just another optional component of redundancy we can install in the tank to help achieve long-term success. So now that we have a decent understanding of what to expect from UV, how does it work? UV sterilizers do exactly what the name suggests. It doesn't outright kill the pathogens, but instead it uses ultraviolet light to damage the pathogen's DNA, effectively sterilizing them and preventing them from reproducing themselves. Most sterilizers are fairly simple designs with some larger pipe, a waterproof cord sleeve, and a UV emitting light bulb. By flowing water through the pipe, we create the time for the UV light to encounter the pathogens and effectively sterilize them. There are three main elements which control the effectiveness of the sterilizer, strength of the bulb, flow rate or contact time with the bulb, and the size of the tank or water volume the sterilizer has to effectively treat. 
In most cases, a UV sterilizer has to be fairly large to be effective, which is an obvious deterrent to most reefers. Not everyone has a few hundred bucks in space for a few foot long two or three inch pipe. In my opinion, this is one of those things where you're better off skipping it entirely than installing something too small because an undersized sterilizer is probably a complete waste of time and money. This is another element which I think fuels the UV sterilizer debate. Almost all of the sterilizers marketed to the hobby end of the aquarium market are inappropriately small and fairly useless. Most of the manufacturers, no hobbyists, are more likely to buy small, easy to install, and budget friendly options. So sadly, that's what they produce and sell regardless of their effectiveness. These tiny sterilizers have almost no value. That's why we typically look to more industrial options like sterilizers from Emperor Aquatics to maintain a long-term successful brand with products popular in commercial applications like zoos, public aquariums, and marine wholesalers. The products need to work as intended and produce profitable results. Working as intended is about creating the proper contact time with the bulb and the ultraviolet light sufficient to sterilize the tank. It's a balance of how much water the sterilizer can hold, how fast you flow water through the sterilizer, and the intensity and spectrum of the ultraviolet light. To give you an idea of how these things work in correlation to each other, we have three very similar wattage sterilizers here. A 40 watt Emperor Aquatics Light, which uses a two inch reaction chamber, a 40 watt standard, which uses a three inch chamber, and a 50 watt high output, which uses a five inch reaction chamber. The standard 40 watt sterilizer with a three inch chamber is good for a tank up to 260 gallons with a recommended flow rate of 157 gallons an hour to properly treat for bacteria, algae, and protozoa, which covers a vast majority of what we're concerned about. However, the three inch chamber is pretty large and can be hard to place and why they make the smaller two inch light versions. Even though the bulb is the same strength, the smaller reaction chamber reduces the dwell time and exposure to the UV light, so the light version is only good for a tank up to 160 gallons rather than the 260. The suggested flow rate is also significantly lower at 98 gallons per hour. The high output 50 watt version is just 10 watts more, but it's good all the way up to 480 gallons. This is because a higher intensity bulb can penetrate the water further within the 5 inch reaction chamber, which also has additional dwell time. Suggested flow rate for this is 260 gallons an hour. I would note that while it's bigger around, the high output 50 watt is only 30 inches long where the light and standard 40 watt sterilizers are 43 inches. So the high output models might be the best fit in some instances just because of the shorter body style. A couple things you should note about the tank size suggestions, you'll notice the ratings are significantly lower than most of the products out there. That's because it's important to them that the products are effective. The flow rates consider about 90% UV transmittability, knowing your water is likely somewhat dirty. The suggested flow rates are also based on end of bulb life and a 20% reduction in output. This means a sterilizer's rating is much closer to real end user's actual implementation, which increases success rates. For the most part, I'd say there's no need to go larger than the suggested maximum aquarium size. The few instances where I might suggest that is if you know you're a lazy reefer with dirty yellow water where it's hard for the UV light to penetrate, no matter what I say, that's going to be the way it is, then I'd probably get a unit which rated for one and a half to two times your tank size. That said, a few dollar bag of high quality carbon is going to remove almost all of the yellowing compounds from the water. So even if you're fairly lazy about water changes, you can use some carbon and not have to oversize your sterilizer. The other instance is related to installation. If your installation has a feed pump and the sterilizer's output in the same area, it's going to immediately reprocess or recirculate a lot of the same water which was just sterilized and significantly decrease the overall effectiveness. When the sterilizer sets its rating for a 160 gallon tank with 98 gallons an hour of flow, they're basing that off of how many times a day 99.9% .9 of the water is going to pass through the sterilizer a day with the expected sterilization effectiveness rate with each pass through. That means the best insulation options will minimize the re-sterilization of water which was just sterilized. A couple of good installation options are to divert a small amount of water from your return pump through the sterilizer to one of your returns on the tank, which will minimize unintentional reprocessing of the water through the sterilizer and function as intended. An install like this is probably best done when installing and plumbing the tank. Alternatively, because the flow rate is pretty low, it's normally safe to put the feed pump in an earlier stage of the sump, like the skimmer area, and have the output of the sterilizer feed into the return pump chamber. This will also maximize the unsterilized water passing through the sterilizer. Since sump designs vary, you'll want to make sure this will work safely with yours. 
One thing we normally don't recommend is feeding the sterilizer from the overflow of your tank. There are ways to properly do this, however, controlling the flow rate is a lot harder. There's often a lot of air bubbles that go down the overflow that we wouldn't want inside the sterilizer. Couple answers to common questions. Will a UV sterilizer hurt the beneficial bacteria that filter my tank? A vast majority of the bacteria that filter your tank live on surfaces like sand, rock, media, or even glass, so this isn't an issue. However, I probably wouldn't have it on during my initial tank cycle. Can I use a UV sterilizer with organic carbon dosing methods like vodka, bio pellets, or zeovit, which rely on a different type of bacteria, some of which is dosed? Most reefers would say it's not recommended, and I'd probably agree. These methods are not completely understood, and I'd follow the manufacturer's recommendations or emulate other reefers who've had success with methods like these, and they most commonly don't use sterilizers with organic carbon dosing. Will a UV sterilizer hurt the copepod, amphipod, or other desirable microfauna populations? Most likely very little to no impact. Most of these things are far too big to be impacted by the sterilizer, and most of them live on surfaces rather than in the water column. And the small amount of water passing through the unit means the UV sterilizer has very little impact on microfauna. Can I replace my quarantine tank or hospital tank with a UV sterilizer on my main tank? Nope, they're not replacements for good habits like this. However, they will likely reduce the chances you'll ever need a hospital tank. And it is a great idea if you know you're never going to realistically quarantine fish before you add new ones to the tank. Will the UV sterilizer prevent or treat all the algae in my tank? It won't have any impact on the algae already growing on surfaces, but I have seen it significantly reduce the spread of waterborne algae and photosynthetic bacteria like cyano. For instance, you're likely to find yourself cleaning the glass way less frequently, and while existing cyano patches won't be impacted, it's less likely you'll find it in new areas. Time to show you our install for the BRS-160. This tank is already plumbed, so tear it apart to send water from the return pump through one of the returns, which is one of the better install options, really wasn't realistic. We also didn't want to add additional pumps to the system, which means we're going to feed the sterilizer with the plumbing manifold we set up earlier. We installed it on the end here, furthest away from the return pump, which is going to feed it. There will be some amount of re-sterilization with this install because some of the water that's already been sterilized is going to be sent back to the sterilizer by the return pump and some back to the tank. Our estimate was about a third or less of the water is going to be reprocessed. To compensate for that, we selected a larger sterilizer. With the perfect install, we could have gone with the smaller 40 watt light version. Because we're reprocessing some of the water, we need to go larger. The 40 watt standard would have been sufficient for this tank and our install solution, but we ultimately went with a 50 watt high output. The reason we went so big on this was really more about the dimensions of the sterilizer than anything. The shorter dimensions of the high output model just fit in the location we wanted to install it in much better than the longer 40 watt standard. For me, neat, simple, and attractive generally also translates into a safe quality install. The manifold we installed in week five included a ball valve at the end. We're going to use that to control the flow rate through the sterilizer. The flow rate is a critical step to the install, so don't overlook the importance here. Too fast and there won't be enough contact time to work properly. Too slow and we won't have enough of the tank's water volume passing through the sterilizer to achieve the desired goals. Since this sterilizer is rated for 480 gallons, which is three times the size of the BRS-160 we're installing it on, we obviously have a significant margin of error here. The suggested maximum flow rate is 260 gallons an hour, and a number we absolutely don't want to go above, or there won't be sufficient contact time to sterilize the water. Because we have that room to play with with this huge sterilizer, we're going to shoot for 240 gallons an hour, which will give us a buffer in both directions. Again, to adjust the flow, we're going to use that ball valve. To measure the flow rate, we're just going to collect some water at the output, time it, and do the math. For instance, if you collected a gallon in a minute, it would be 60 gallons an hour. In this case, because I have limited room, I'm going to use a graduated beaker to do the timed measurement and then calculate the flow rate from that. You'll notice we plumb the intake to the bottom of the UV sterilizer and the output to the top. This is to make sure all the air escapes the UV sterilizer. If we had plumbed the intake to the top, it'd be easy for a lot of air to get permanently trapped inside the sterilizer. How you plumb it will depend a lot on your space constraints, but make sure to consider how the air is going to escape. The plumbing was fairly simple, just a couple two inch spigot to slip bushings to get the unions and the sterilizer down to three quarters inch, some blue pipe and a mix of street spigot and standard 90 degree elbows. 
If you end up using a pump, make sure it's something that can handle the head pressure from your install. A flow rated pump like an MJ1200 is rated for almost 300 gallons an hour, but it's not designed for head pressure like this and almost certainly not going to work for most UV installs. A DC pump like the Waveline or Ecotech Vetra is nice because you can adjust the flow rate with the control pad. The Waveline is also apex ready, so you can do that with your aquarium controller. I've also heard they might have a flow meter module coming out. Depending on how that works with an apex ready pump like the Waveline, that could be a pretty cool combination for something like this. However, most of us will elect for a much more affordable option with something like the Quiet One from Lifeguard, which is probably the least expensive reliable option, or the Cite Synchro Silent, which is one of the smallest options with the longest warranty. The Synchros have the ability to adjust the flow rate with a knob on the front if you wish. However, I've found that limiting the intake like this can create some amount of additional noise with pumps like this, and you're better off with a valve on the output. Last note on sterilizers, some manufacturers offer them with and without wipers to clean the quartz sleeve inside. Regardless of the brand, most people will recommend not using the wiper version in salt water because the steel rod can corrode over time, even with the best grades of steel. Next week, we're going to add our first fish to this tank, which is a huge step, and you don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in learning more about UV sterilizers, particularly the ones we used in this video, check out this link. See you next week with week 15 of the BRS 160, adding our first fish.